Hi, it's Jillian from Lovely Loops, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to use the Procreate version of the Paint Bucket Fill Tool. We'll start with the basics of how to fill large areas of your canvas with color. Then I'm going to walk you through some really neat tips and tricks of how you can save lots of time doing this and allow you to adjust smaller areas of color independently from one another, just to make things a little bit easier on you. So let's go ahead and get started. So in this example, let's say that we wanted the background of this design to be this light pink color. So a really slow and efficient way of doing that would be taking your brush and coloring the entire background of how you wanted it to be. Okay, so obviously we're not going to do that because that would take forever. Plus, if you're on the same layer, you would have to really be careful to avoid those edges that you already had. So a much easier way of doing it is using Procreate's version of Paint Bucket Fill, which is called Color Drop. So in the top right corner where your color disc is, you're going to take that and drag it over to your canvas and then drop it in. So that is going to quickly recolor this entire area. You can do that for the small areas as well. So you take that, fill it in, or you could leave those open. Okay, I'm going to undo that. So you may think that an easier way to do this would just be to change your background color to a different color. And that's true. This would give you the black design on your background layer, but now you don't have any flexibility to change the color um, like this to make this a gradient or anything um, or to change the color of the inner loop. So I'm going to undo that and leave my background color as white and then show you again, just drag this in and it will fill in the outline. Okay, so this looks good. Now let's say I wanted to fill in each of these inner loops with a different color. I could choose a new color here, drag these in however I wanted and it's starting to come together. The only problem with this is that now I can't edit any of these things separately. So this is all on the same layer. If I take away my background color, you can see that those these are like cutouts. It's transparent where I don't have anything filled in and once you go to fill it, then it, it fills it in on that same layer. So we have all of this on one layer. It is possible to create these kind of effects on different layers so that you can edit things independently. So let me just hit undo a couple times so I can get back to the original way that I had my design. All right. So what we're going to do now is create a new layer on top of this design one. So this is going to be our new layer. And let's just rename it pink background. This can be above or below your design layer. And I'm just going to rename that to design so I know what I'm dealing with. So in order to get the same effect of having the pink background around our design, let's go, let's go back to that pink color we had before. So a trick is if you tap and hold on your color circle, it'll take you to the previous color. Whoops. Previous color. All right, so if we did the same thing on the pink background layer, drag this. Now you can see, whoops, it's filling the entire layer. So that's not what we wanted. Remember, we wanted just to go around the outer edge of the design and leave those inner loops unfilled. So the way to do this would be making this design layer a reference layer. So tap on the design layer and choose reference. Go back to your pink background layer and color drop. And now you can see that these are two separate layers here. So we have the design layer as the reference and then the pink background as a completely separate layer. Now let's color in the loops like we were doing before. So add a new layer. I'm going to rename it inner loops and now this is design is still our reference layer so if I choose a new color I'm just going to tap and hold to return to that purple now I can fill in those loops and it's keeping that layer with design as our reference layer um, and we can do these in different colors if you want so let's grab some blue and change these all to a different color inner loops okay so now if we take away our pink background layer, you can see we can still edit these separately. So if we decide to change our mind on the background color or we just don't want it anymore, it's nice to be able to have these as separate layers. Same thing, we can take away those inner loops. We could also take away the design and leave this kind of cutout look. So if we removed our background color, now you can see that the design part is actually transparent. So let's say that we decided we wanted all of these inner loops to be the same color and we wanted them to be, um, let's, let's go with 
this dark blue here. So on our inner loop layer, you could go ahead and fill in each of these, but a quicker way to just to fill all of those in is to use recolor. So what you need to know about recolor is start with your color as whatever color you want to change something to. So right now we want to change this transparent area to blue. So I have blue selected. Now I'm going to go to my adjustments, which is the wand up here, and at the very bottom choose recolor. And now you can see that there is this little crosshair. If I move it around, you can maybe see it. You might be able to see it better on your iPad. It's just a little plus button that, or plus icon crosshair that's moving around as I drag it. So it'll start wherever you last tapped, like wherever your last pixel was. Um, but you can move it around just by dragging it. And then the other thing you can do is just tap all of the areas that you want to fill one by one. And it's, whoops, you can undo by tapping with two fingers. Tap each of those inner loops that you want to fill. And that was a lot easier than, I mean, I know it's not that hard to drag this color in, um, but it's a lot quicker. So now we have all of our inner loops are blue and our pink background is still there. And now our design is pretty neat looking, okay? Um, so you can also actually do this on the design layer. You can use color drop or the paint bucket to recolor things that aren't actually contained areas. So, so far all of the things that we've colored have had, um, have been a shape, but you can recolor lines like this. So if we wanted to make um, oh, let's do like a, let's just make it purple. So if we wanted to make the design purple instead of black, you can choose your purple color up here, then go to recolor. So remember that's under adjustments, recolor. And then right now my crosshair is right there. I'm going to drag it over onto a black area and now it makes it that purple. So I actually think maybe a different color would look better. So I can change the color up here and it will change wherever that crosshair is located. So let's, let's change it to pink. That looks pretty good. So if I wanted to experiment with the color of these inner loops, let's say, um, like maybe I want the blue to be a little bit lighter. What I could do on my inner loop layer is um, drag my blue color in and change it on every single one. Uh, or use that recolor option and then maybe I still don't like it. So in a different way that you can sort of experiment with the color is by using your hue, saturation, brightness sliders. So making sure that we're on the inner loop layer, which is the blue shapes, I'm going to go to my adjustments and then choose hue, saturation, and brightness. This top slider is hue and now I can drag this to the left and right to choose different hues and I can also change the saturation as well as the brightness to find exactly what I'm looking for. So rather than having to fill in all of your loops, take a step back and decide that you don't like it and you want a different color, um, you can use hue, saturation, and brightness sliders to change the colors on your entire layer. Another thing that you can do if you have an exact color that you want to change all of these inner loops to, so let's say you already know exactly um, what the value is, so let's just choose dark purple. Okay, so if you knew exactly that you wanted it to be dark purple, um, rather than filling all of these areas in, you could choose alpha lock and fill the layer. Before I get to that, I just want to point out, when I filled this shape in with purple, you can see there's a little bit of a light blue edge around it still. So if you get that effect, which obviously you wouldn't want if you want this to just be a single purple shape, you would drag in your color and then drag your pencil to the right. So you can see at the top here, it says color drop threshold right now is 25%. If I move my pencil to the left, it makes the threshold closer to zero. If you move it to the right, it makes it closer to 100%. So if you get a weird ring around your shape, then you can do the color drop again. And before you let go, drag your pencil to the left and right. So if you make it too big to 100%, it might just fill your entire layer. So that's something you can experiment with. Okay, but going back to this, so if we wanted all of these to be purple and we already had the value, like we didn't want to change the HSB sliders, what you could do is go to your layer, tap on it and choose alpha lock. This is going to lock in the pixels that you already have so that you can only change those pixels. Then tap on the layer again and choose fill layer. And now you have all of those little areas are your purple color. 
So it's not exactly intuitive at first how to use the paint bucket fill feature in Procreate because again, this doesn't really look like a paint bucket, it's just a circle and it works a little bit differently. But once you know how to use it, you can start to see the benefit of creating separate layers. And remember I used this design layer as my reference layer for the entire thing. Um, which is how I was able to get these all on separate layers. Um, you could do this all on a single layer, but then some of those things we did, like alpha locking, wouldn't work because you'd be all, all on the same layer. So anyway, using the reference layer is a really good way to be able to edit things independently. And this is just going to save you a lot of time versus going in and using your pencil to um, color in all of the areas that you want to change to a different color. I hope you guys found that video helpful. Please subscribe to our channel for more videos about Procreate and lettering.